Hi everyone, welcome to the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to uh, do a cookie sketch on how to capture hydrangeas. I had a, a couple of requests from a few ladies on my page uh, who were asking how to draw them. So I wanted to uh, walk you through a few steps here. As you can see, I practice away first, uh, make sure that I can do it myself and uh, kind of break it down in a way that uh, simplifies it for beginners. And um, so here is a couple of versions that I did. This is a colored pencil option with uh, the purples. In my garden, I only get the white hydrangeas. Uh, there's a variety here in Ontario that kind of turn a little bit pink, but I don't have those in my garden. I just have the white ones. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through a little bit of a step-by-step -step on how to um, draw these. Uh, I pressed a few uh, myself with a varnish technique. I uploaded a video recently on how to do that with some of my hydrangeas that have dried. So uh, if you're interested in that video, I will link it below. Uh, so let's get started here. I've done a couple of little small sketches on how to break it down for you. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through these little sketches first, and then we will decorate this page with a full drawing. All right, let's get started. So today you will need a pencil or a pen, whatever you're comfortable drawing with. Uh, in my case, I use a 0 0.7 lead, uh, which is the size of the lead, and an HB. Uh, you can use any pencils you want. Sometimes I switch to a 3B just for a little bit of a softer lead and uh, and an eraser. So I wanna just show you how to break the shapes down for these hydrangeas. So hydrangeas are clusters of little, little tiny florets, I guess you could say, all stuck together in this little pom-pom shape. Uh, so we wanna break down the specific shape of these little petals. So I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer. I hope that helps. I'm in a new little location in my house. So I hope the lighting's okay. All right, let's give it a try. So we're gonna start with a, the simplest shape, which is a, a face looking directly at the petal. So you're gonna draw a little circle in the middle, and then you're gonna bring your line up to a soft point and then back down. And then you're gonna repeat that process down the bottom. And then you're gonna pull one out the side you can make them a little bit wonkier shapes and we'll we'll get into that a little later. And that's the basic form of these petals. Now you can have hydrangeas that are a little bit uh, more spaced out or broken up by wind or things like that where the petals we're gonna do face on again but we're gonna give them a little bit of space in between. So I'm gonna bring it out almost like a spade on a card. You know the, the spade type shape. I'm going to bring it back in, and you see this loop space I'm leaving here when this one doesn't have that. So uh, we want to make sure that we leave a little bit of space in there. And this kind of gives us a little bit of variety in sh of the form that we can play with. We can tuck that one back in. And there's another one. So again, these are going to be all clustered together. So to make the, the overall ball puffy ball that they have. We want a little bit of dimension, so we're gonna start curving the flowers. We're gonna capture the flowers on a side angle. So what I like to do is start with a tiny little oval, and that tells me my center of my flower. And then I'm gonna give myself a line across like that, and then I'm gonna wrap this line back down like that. And then what I like to do is curve another line over top like this. So I have one, two, three lines. And this will make sense in a minute. So then I'm gonna go over to the opposite side. I'm gonna give myself my little spade shape. And then I'm gonna bring a petal out the side and a petal out the side. And now we have a side profile. So this is the center of the flower. And these are our four petals. So this one is facing us. It's growing right towards us. And these kind of forms will really help build up the overall form of this little puffy flower ball. <laughs> so it's a question of just loosening up, practicing, taking deep breaths and giving it a go. And you'll know when you, you get it right because it will look realistic. 
So this time I'm gonna give myself a wider view. So this one's growing right at me. This one's growing at me, but curving. So it's curving down like that. So I can't see the center of where that petal would grow from, but I'm catching the tail end of it. Then I'm gonna do my one across. And I do another one tucked behind and another one tucked behind. And that's it. And you can keep playing with these different shapes. So let's do one facing down. So I'm gonna give myself a kind of weird kidney shape. I remember my center of my flowers here. I always like to draw the center. It helps me figure out where the rest of the petals go. So this one we could do maybe a kind of, it's been beaten up a bit. So I'm gonna go out and around and I'm gonna bring it back in. So this petal is folded over this way. And that's the inside of the petal here. And then I'm gonna give myself another one. So I think I'll give it a little bit of space and maybe wrap a little curve on that one. And you can get as detailed as you want. You can put as much effort in as you like to capture the form. The one thing you do wanna do though is to make sure you get this point. I find when I start drawing, it get a little sloppy on the edges and I start curving them like this. And uh, they they don't have that hydrangea feel anymore because they have almost a pointy, a soft point. If I soften this edge too much, I find it starts looking like a like an apple blossom. And we don't want that, we want these, these points. So we pretty much uh, have captured different shapes and we're gonna show you on the next page how to, how to kind of tuck them all in. But hydrangeas actually have really pretty leaves as well. They're very detailed. So I wanna show you really quick how to do a leaf. So I just pull a line up, I hope you can see. And then I give myself a very faint line and I'm gonna keep it faint so I do hope you can see it because I'm gonna manipulate these lines in a second. So I'll go out and back out and back. So they have these kind of sharp little pointy edges. I mean, they don't hurt or anything, but they have some textured edges to their leaves. So I go up and back, up and back, and I just keep working my way down. And then I'm gonna pull some veining in. And I pull some veining in here. And they have these just these really pretty textures and inside these are all these other little veins that you can really get into if you want to do the detail the flowers also have a lot of veining uh sorry the the petals but we're not going to get into too much detail because these are just quickie sketches so there's a leaf and then we can do a broadside leaf too because that's important to have some dimension in the leaves so again i curve my line out i'm going to bring this line back I'm gonna bring this line, but I'm gonna curve it in, and then I'm gonna curve it back out. So this has now folded over this way. So this is the edge of my leaf. I'm gonna edge it on the way out, and I'm gonna edge it on the way back. This is the center of the leaf, and this is the back side of the leaf. So now I'm gonna give myself some veins and again, just keep practicing. Now these veins are gonna curve this way because that's the way the petal, the leaf, sorry, has curved. And now you have, so if you put some shadow in here, for example, it gives it even more depth, which we'll play with in a minute. I just wanna kinda of show you how it's curved here. So this, this leaf is like this and the bottom end's curved in. So the, we've practiced some of those and you can keep practicing. And we're gonna jump to the next page here where I wanna show you how we put the whole little snowball together. Um, I call it a snowball because it looks like a snowball in, in summertime. I think they're called, the ones I have are called Annabelle's. Um, so let's, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna give myself a place to put some notes about my garden about my hydrangeas. Now that I've pressed them, I wanna do the year that I press them for my journal. So I have this little uh, stamp here, Stampin' It Up, I believe it's called, and I just got it off, I think I got it off uh, Marketplace. And I like to give myself some lines 
hopefully this will show up so that I can journal later. And I like lines because I can't write straight. I've got very messy writing. And I'll put things like dates and specimens and things like that. But I wanna decorate around the page now. So I'm gonna start with the simplest shape, which is, I don't even, yeah, my little center. And I'm gonna work my way out and do those little spade shapes. And I'm nice and relaxed. I'm not worried about ruining it, it's just pencil. If I screw it up, I just erase it and start again. So now I wanna start clustering them. So I think I'm gonna do another full one facing me over here. And just wiggle away and take your time. If you wanna really capture the shape, I draw quickly because I like the idea of a quickie sketch. I want it nice and loose and relaxed. So now I'm gonna put another one where it's tucked behind. So I'm gonna start that kind of kidney shape again. There's my center. And there's my petal going away. There's my side petals. So you can see this guy, the line doesn't go through because this petal is in front of that petal. So I'm gonna do one over here where this petal will sit in front. So I'm gonna do a fun shape, a center, Oops, sorry, I'm gonna do my away line. Somebody just came in. I moved into this room because I didn't wanna get interrupted. I still have a feeling they're gonna find me. <laughs> or call me. All right, uh, let's do another center one here. So another little kidney shape. Do a line going up, a line to the outside around to the outside. And anything that's in front that's already been drawn, I break the line. So I think I'd like to do a stem coming up here because I really wanna make sure I get some leaves in. I'm gonna do a leaf right here. And put my center leaf. And then I'm gonna break up that line. And there's my center, and then I'm just going to do some veining, just nice and loose. Okay, so now I've got a, a leaf in there. I think I'll do another leaf maybe curving. So let's do one here. So now this one's curving towards me. It's going to come off the stem. Curves like this, and curves away. And maybe I'll make it, let's see, let's see how I feel. I'm gonna, what's nice is if you have some of these in your garden, you can uh, you can put one right in front of you and draw it, which is nice. I'm kind of doing it from my head, so I'm trying to remember what everything looks like. So I'm just gonna do the back end here, just a little curve, nothing too dramatic. There we go, some veining. And remember the contour lines we talk about in other quickie sketches where you wanna follow the shape of the flower. Don't just go straight. You wanna curve the flower. Same with these guys, I curve it. And it just gives it instant dimension by using contour lines. Okay, so I've got some of those in. I think I'm gonna put a petal right here. Center. And a few out this way. Remember, with lines that are already drawn, they get the stuff that you're drawing in gets broken. So this leaf is in front of this petal. So I'm gonna do another one here. This, this, and I just keep drawing away. Uh, let's put another center one right here. So he's facing right at me. There we go. And you can put the little mini stems because they're all on these little tiny, I wish I had one in front of me. Uh, all these little tiny stems here, I don't know if you can see them. But they're uh, little stems that attach all the individual flowers back to the main stem. So every now and then those will peek through. So you can do a couple of those. 
So there's a little bit there. We can extend it so we can do another one behind. And another stem and put some more up here. And you just keep going and keep going until you get as many as you like. I like to try and kind of be dramatic and fill the page. Now mine are getting a little big, that's a bit big. I wanna keep them roughly the same size. And then another one over here maybe, facing me. And you're repeating that shape over again and just creating these clusters. And then maybe there's, there's a plant up here and it's coming down here. Right? And it just adds some interest to this part of the page. And there's one here. So you're just repeating these, these patterns, one, two, three, four, five, over and over again, close together. Maybe we'll put a plant coming out this way. So we'll put a full one. And then a little one on the side. And I want to show you how we can kind of draw them in. Maybe I'll write the word hydrangea up here. I hate my handwriting. I had a lady on my uh, page tell me to spread, like elongate the letters and it will help my handwriting. And she's so right, it really helped. So you kind of stretch the lettering out. It's it's really helped my handwriting. We all have something we want to work on. So mine is handwriting. <laughs> and maybe we'll put, uh, let's put a leaf right here. I think it needs a little re leaf. So let's put one as if it's coming out behind these flowers. And again, the line breaks wherever the drawing's already been drawn. Give it its rough little pointy edges. Pull our veining in, see contour, so I'm following the shape back to the leaf. Maybe a little leaf coming in here like this. Something, a little something. And then maybe let's do a little bit more here. Or we can add more lines to to a journal, but I think I'll add a, just a couple, just for fun, they're fun to draw. And a couple here, so I'm just gonna speed up a little because I wanna color a few in with you. So I hope you draw along with me. Again, it's just about being relaxed. Don't be upset if, you, if you're drawing and it doesn't look right. It just takes some practice, that's all like anything. I'm just going to do a quick leaf here. There. All right. So I thought because my page is um, kind of like a neutral palette, I wanted to leave it a neutral palette. Um, I didn't want to do um, bright colors because again, I don't have these kind of hydrangeas here, but, uh, or I think maybe it's something to do with the acidity in the soil that changes them to this color. Because out west, they are all a range of purples and blues and pinks. When here, they're mostly white, and we don't have a lot of acidity in the soil. That would be my educated guess. Um, so I don't want to really color this on here. I want to keep it kind of the palette that I have here in Ontario. So I'm going to just grab a couple of pencil crayons, and I'm going to do more of like a dried hydrangea, where they go this really nice kind of brownie pink color. Uh, so I use my Prismacolors. Now you can use um, whatever pencils you have. Uh, I can list the colors that I've used below. And uh, uh, it's really just having a range of browns in this case, if you're doing purples, a range of purples. So if you decide to do like a bluish hydrangea, you're gonna do the same thing that I'm doing only in your color palette. And I'm gonna need a white. And you're gonna need like a black pen or a ballpoint pen or one of these micron pens just to uh, pull some of the details out. I like that look myself. So I'm gonna start with a kind of soft color here and you can see my pencil crayons need some serious sharpening. 
but I'm just going to color it in this kind of, this is a beige it's called. And these are again, Prismacolor pencils. So they're a high end pencil crayon, but you can use whatever you got. You can use markers, whatever look you're looking for, or you can just leave it as a sketch. You can sketch it in with pencil crayon, uh, with just a regular pencil lead. So I'm just going to do a few because I want to show you the process. I'm going to do work on this little cluster right here. Oh, and we're going to need a green, a pale green. I like to add just a little bit of green. So I'm just going to color them in quickly. And then I'm going to go to a warmer brown. So like this purpley looking brown, which is a terra, which is a sienna brown. And I'm just going to throw in a little bit in the center. I'm not pushing hard. I don't want to go too dark too fast. And I'm going to throw in a little bit in the background leaves just to separate the front. So this one's in front, so I'm going to make this one behind it darker. And it's just a little trick to help visually pop the flowers in front and in back. It kind of helps whoever's looking at the drawing see where the petals sit in order. I'm just going to pop the center here and just a little on this guy, just a touch, because he's sitting behind this one. And then I'm going to do a little bit in this one. And again, I'm working quick. I like the idea of a quickie sketch, but you can take your time. I find coloring very therapeutic. And just sit in front of the TV and color away. There we go. Just put a little bit in there. And then I'm going to go to, let's say, this brown, which is, that's the same thing. Uh, let's go a little, little pinkish. So this is a uh, process red. So I'm just going to add a little bit of pink. I don't want a lot of color, just a little. Just saying, hey, it's almost fall time. We're starting to change. We're starting to dry out. And uh, we have a variety here. I'm not sure what they're called. They're kind of uh, they're very stocky and they go a really pretty pale pink in the fall. I don't have any in my garden, but I will one day because <laughs> I just love hydrangeas. They're just so pretty. A little bit of pink. And I think what we'll do now is we'll use our whites. So this is just a, a standard white and it needs sharpening. Um, we're going to, I have another one here actually. A little pointier as you can see I use a lot of white so now I'm going to push on the white and it, what it does is it burnishes the colors and kind of helps blend them all together and you would do the same thing if you if you say you're doing the purple ones um, this is just the, a step I like to do because it pushes all the colors together uh, you may or may not like doing this part uh, and the more you burnish, the harder you burnish, the less color the the paper will absorb. So you kind of have to do this on the last step. You can make minor adjustments after, but the paper will only absorb so much pencil crayon now because we've kind of flattened the fibers of the paper. So I'm sorry, my hand's in the way. I just want to color, get these in. And it's a very short <laughs> little white. Let's flip to this one. All right, so now what I like to do is use a black pen. I'm just gonna use my little micron here. And I like to just really pop the centers. You can use a dark brown on that, but I like the, the drama. And I'm gonna also write a couple of things with the black pen around my page so it kind of ties the palette together. And for the, um, for the, uh, just want to tidy up some of my lines. For these guys, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to my, my pale, what's it called? Beige. I'm going to throw that color in to my leaves. I'm trying to think and color at the same time. And I'm just going to add a little. 
And then I think I'll put in some of this pretty green. And this is a chartreuse green. It's very soft. It has a nice little impact throughout the drawing. And I get it inside those little pieces we drew. So I'm just gonna do this cluster because this will take too long and I, I think you get the point. And maybe some, a little bit more dark brown. So this is a dark brown, it's called. <laughs> so I wanna just pop the center, maybe a little bit more. Maybe darken these back leaves just a little bit, just for a little more drama inside the cluster. And you can actually go right inside in between these little areas, cause these are all, there's more flowers back there and they'd all be in kind of shade in the center and it really makes the, the front cluster pop. So you can see suddenly these petals really sit in front. So you see it kind of coming together. And that's the idea behind drawing hydrangeas, tiny little shapes all pressed together. And then what's nice about it is you can just draw another leaf if you want. I think no, that space is too empty. I'm gonna put another one in there. And then you draw another one in and repeat the process with the coloring. Easy peasy. So yeah, it's just about loosening up, having fun, working kind of loose, easy going, no stress. That's the name of the game here. Just enjoy the process. And there you go. I'm gonna use a little bit of white, soften this guy out. I think put a little bit more drama in the leaf here, a little bit more brown. See starting to dry out too. Nice and loose, scribbling some color in. Not overly concerned about where the color's going. Just putting some in. And then using the white, soften it out. Now you can also have the effect of, I don't know if I have a sample here, of using an outline with the black pen. So let's put, let's write this word first. Hydrangea. Make sure it's dry before you erase. You don't want to smear it. And then if you want something really dramatic, like you want to keep it soft like this, you can leave it. But if you want something dramatic, you can redraw all the lines that you did in pencil with your marker. So some markers will have a hard time sitting on top of this waxy pencil crayon, but you'll be able to stumble across something that will sit on top. Just trying to keep my hand out of the way here. And you can see it's very dramatic pulling out these black lines. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Depends on the look I want. Um, let's see if we can do a couple, just a couple up here so you get the idea. My pen's starting to die. What else have we got? I got this guy. Let's see if this one works. I need some new pens. I go through them pretty fast. So you can see very, very dramatic effect. And you may, or, like I said, you may or may not like it. So there's uh, the kind of look it has with the black outline. And there's the, uh, I'll keep this side over here soft so you can see the difference. So there's the outline, there it is just soft like that. So you can, you can do some of them, you don't have to do them all. You can just pick up on a few petals. Just kind of introduce that black. And then I write, like to write like date. 
and maybe like notes so that when I'm ready, my page is ready to journal on. So there you go. That's how we draw hydrangeas. Baby steps, little, little bits and pieces like this. You practice those shapes and forms and you practice coloring them in if you want with detail, practice the leaves and then you put them together and yet they're same thing. So this looks pretty dramatic compared to these, but all it is is these shapes repeated over and over again. And, uh, and then you can add color, you can keep it neutral, or you can add it to little drawings for tags, whatever you like. So I hope you enjoyed today. If you do, please uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for upcoming tutorials. I hope you have a wonderful day, day everyone. Bye.